Hey everybody, Vaughn here with the Monster Vlog and welcome to day 142 of a year of yoga. Thank you guys so much for joining me here again today. Um, we are going to be going through the same sun salutation that we had been, had been, which I'm actually going to demonstrate seated first. We're going to do one seated rotation um, and then one standing and then we will proceed on with the new postures. But while I do not kind of advertise my, uh, first off, I am not a licensed yoga teacher. I have not gone through the training. I don't consider myself a yoga teacher. This whole series, if you're just popping in, I, in like literally the middle of the first third of it, um, I don't mind that a bit, but uh, this whole journey is just me seeing if I can practice yoga every day. Um, and so far it's been going really well and so far it's been really cool. Um, but I'm not necessarily just doing gentle flows or just doing like I'm here to push myself but that being said I know that there's a lot of folks following along with me who we are all at different levels so I did want to be um you know as approachable as possible with stuff like this and to show you that sometimes you know if you're stuck at your desk but you know you still want to fit in some yoga there are options so we will be starting with our seated sun salutation so I'm just sitting here in actually a computer chair that the back fell off of which worked out and we're going to do a seated mountain pose so even if you're laying down you can practice kind of a laying mountain pose and extend and just feel yourself putting some roots down into the ground maybe wiggle your toes check in with your ankles with your knees with your hips kind of just wiggle your butt wherever you are maybe tuck your pelvis under and token it out with an anterior and posterior tilt. Do a little bit of a chest circle, maybe one way, and then another. Don't forget to breathe, rolling our shoulders up and back, and then up and forward. It's all really nice, good stretch through our neck before coming to a place of stillness, hands just resting on the top of our thighs. And as we inhale, visualize the breath coming in, swirling into the very bottoms of our lungs. Holding it there for a moment, letting it swirl before. Exhaling. Try to take this awareness and mindfulness of breathing with you throughout the rest of our practice today. So we will inhale and exhale, arms up overhead, not bunching our shoulders up by our ears, but just really plugging our fingertips into the sky. We can have our elbow pits rotated so almost that they're trying to look behind us. As we lift our chest with an inhale and exhale, Bending back and in an extended mountain pose. Inhale back up. Exhale, folding forward. You may have quite wide knees for this if you want to come down and touch the ground or touch some blocks or just be leaned over with maybe your forearms on your legs or even continuing that extension in front of you. I like to let my head and shoulders hang, say hello to my feet. To give my tummy and thighs space to coexist, I like to have my knees nice and wide. But you may actually enjoy keeping your knees quite narrow and folding forward in this position. Now from here, we will hold on to our knees as we come back up and let's do some seated cat cows. Exhaling, really opening our back, 
inhaling, scooping forward, like really like we're trying to scrape something with our sternum. And I really like to add a nice undulation to this. We come forward, really pressing through my hands to get a nice deep scoop. We're rolling through, pulling that navel in towards our spine. And let's change directions. So we'll scoop forward, bring our sternum up to the sky, and come down. Scooping back and through. Opening up. Open. Forward and bend back. Now from here, I'm going to place my feet and we will transition into our standing mountain pose. So, it's coming on up. Scooching that out of the way. And taking that same feeling of like really grounding, sending those glutes down, almost like we're pushing the, the ground away from us with our feet. Like not quite jumping, but like maybe the the precursor, that muscle engagement, but sending that force down through us. Let's inhale, arms overhead. <sighs> Rotating our hands so that they're towards each other. Elbow pits are almost looking behind us. And <sighs> exhale, back bend. Inhale up and exhale, swan dive forward. We can rock up onto our toes or rock back onto our heels. When we rock back onto our heels, let's try to lift the outside of our foot just as much as the inside. Find a moment of stillness here. Perhaps letting your head and shoulders hang. Inhale up to a flat back. Let's step our right foot forward, come back down, lower that left knee to the ground, untuck our foot. Get everything nice and positioned. Take, feel free to take up space on your mat. You don't have to be tightrope walking here. Making sure that your knee, though, is traveling over the center line of your foot, that you've got nice strength and control <sighs> into a low crescent lunge. from here let's come down bringing our hands to the mat bringing that foot back coming up into a plank inhale and exhale down nice and slow into an eight limbed inhale and exhale up Exhaling, coming down, tucking our toes, pushing up to plank, and then through to downward facing dog. Deep breaths, maybe lifting up onto your toes and then letting your heels work their way back to the ground. Relaxing your neck and shoulders. Sorry, I realize my microphone is like almost in my mouth right now. Sorry. <laughs> Inhale, exhaling down to plank. I'm going to scoot my hands forward. Bring that left foot forward. Bring that right knee back down to the ground. Untuck the toes. Coming up into a low crescent lunge. Inhale, coming forward. Exhale, let's walk that back foot up to the front into another forward fold. Let's 
just really relaxing into it. Maybe shifting our weight from side to side. And you could use blocks or a bolster or an ottoman or something to bring the ground up to you. From here, let's bend our knees generously and roll up. One vertebrae at a time. Back into mountain pose. If your heart's beating, just focus on that. Kind of hear it and just recognize it. Observe without judgment. And my pants are trying to fall off. I got these pants on like the clearance rack. And they are the softest, silkiest, most buttery of $5 leggings. But man, they don't want to stay on. <laughs> I feel like I need suspenders with them. Okay. Or like a little garter belt to come down from my bra to hold my, <laughs> hold my leggings up. Which actually... Not a bad idea. <laughs> Just saying. Um, <laughs> so from here, let us step back with our left foot. Placing that foot down on the ground. Not perfectly parallel, but kind of just angled at like a 45 degree angle on the mat. And traveling our right knee over the center of our right foot. Let's inhale up into a warrior one. Exhale, arms down, airplane. Really reaching those fingers out. And then I'm going to step forward and up and step back with my right foot again at that 45 degree angle, keeping my left leg strong and centered over the center of my foot. We will come up into a warrior one and exhale, airplane. And I'm holding this for five breath cycles. That's one, here's two, three, four. And five. From here, I'm going to place my hands down, bring my knees back, hovering point for just a moment before lowering my knees to the mat. And we are going to ease ourselves back into a child's pose. Now from here, I actually have some blocks today to try to hold my head up. Um, <laughs> so we have our strap again and we have our hands looped into the strap. And I'd like to start having a controlled coming forward, not using my hands, but I'm really afraid of just face planting. <laughs> so <laughs> we'll see what it is. Um, actually, I'm going to start this with... Yeah, I just, I need coaching on this posture because I don't think I've got it in me right now. So I'm just going to put both of my hands uh, here in the strap and just bowing forward and lifting. As I inhale, I come out of the stretch. As I exhale, I come into it. I'm going to bring my knees a little wider. And I'm actually going to try bringing my head to the ground, grabbing the strap, and lifting. Now, in the posture, it shows being in child's pose with your forehead to the ground. Uh... I need to find some variations on this or something. So we'll see how that goes. I'm going to try it again another day. <laughs> so just leave my strap on my butt. 
up next, we're gonna be just rolling back, bringing our feet in front of us. And we are going to be adding to our sequence um, folk pose. So from here, we're gonna sit, keeping our knees engaged. If you want to keep a block between your knees to give you a sense of awareness of that engagement so that our thighs aren't just like flopping open, or even a block between your feet as well to just really give that sense of engagement. Just sitting like this, I feel like, can be so beneficial. And we will lean back. Again, I'm going to keep that block there just to keep that, that sense of alignment. <sighs> Exhale. Let's lift our feet. Arms forward. It's okay if you're shaking. If you're not quite there, you can hold on to your feet. It's really good for strengthening your arms. And just practice lifting your feet off the mat. <sighs> there we go. Don't forget to breathe. And let's... Try it the next level up with your legs extended. And again, still with your arms out front. Ooh, wee. <laughs> I'm going to come out of that for just a sec. And coming up. Let's try that one more time. So we're going to come. I'm going to leave the block down this time. Holding on to the back of our thighs, back of our knees. And you can even do just one leg at a time. Two. Three, and bring it down. Let's inhale and raise the other leg. Just one. Two. And three. And bring it back down. Oof. I'm going to come into cobbler's pose for just a sec. Say hello to my toe beans. How you doing toes? You know what we haven't done in a minute? Clapped our feet. <laughs> Whew, I've always found. Okay. Real talk time. I've been following along with like workout DVDs and all sorts of stuff. I've done P90X. I've done Insanity. I've done a lot of the beach body programs actually. Um, and so many of them are like, even like, oh, 10 minute abs, they're brutal. And they, they assume a certain like base level of fitness. And it's like, I needed an ab strength building exercise that like starts me at like baby step square one of like, we're just going to hold this pre boat pose and then lift one leg and do that for like, and so hopefully I'm hoping that if I tackle something to try to build strength in my core, that yes, it's pushing. I mean, it look, probably looks ridiculously easy to folks who are like already fit, but I just need something to get me from point A to point B. And there's a whole spectrum of baby steps between these two positions um, of just not feeling like I'm absolutely failing at it because that's how it felt with like, what is it? The, uh, the slim and six, their abs segment. I really liked it, but it just, it was too intense. Even though it was only 10 minutes, it was a really intense 10 minutes and it didn't give you, you options for lowering the intensity, but still building up. So that's kind of the fine line that I'm trying to find a balance with. <sighs> I'm still just like, let's catch our breath for a sec. Just sitting in an easy posture. Just let your thoughts come and go until there's stillness. There we go. So I'm trying to find a balance between something that is achievable and something that is pushing the boundaries of what I am capable of. And it's in that zone that I feel like progress is made. If every day we spend our energy and our effort 
doing things that are challenging but achievable, then we're constantly going to be pushing that edge. Um, and I'm such a creature of comfort that it's like my tendency is to want to just stay in the zone of things that are comfortable, that, that aren't hard or difficult. Like I want to be just a potato, <laughs> you know, but mm, that's not really what I want. That's what the lazy mammal in me wants. The, uh, the Vaughn who's like a tiger mom to myself is like, no, let's uh, do literally everything. So, <laughs> um, so just trying and so I don't want to bite off more than I can chew and feel like I'm failing. Um, you know, by it, cause if I plan out, okay, I'm going to do a hundred things today, 99 of them are hard. If I only accomplish 50 of them, I feel like I failed, which, you know, that's on me. Um, but if I plan 30 things, 30 of which are probably challenging, um, and get all of them done, I was like, yeah, we did a good job. Or if I plan 50 and get 50 done. So just having realistic mile markers you know realistic goals that we can get to and that we're not constantly pushing you know you know keeping ourselves from reaching that goal by pushing it back like let's get to the goal celebrate it and then get our eyes on the next goal post so thank you guys so so much for joining me here today let me know how you're doing down in the comments and i will see y'all tomorrow so until then keep on keeping on Bye. <laughs>